Hey there, CPO here, and I'm going to bind my FreeSky D8R2 Plus receiver to my 9XR uh, transmitter with the FreeSky DJT JR module installed. So I haven't uh, actually used uh, this uh, D8R yet, and I'm going to put it into my Bixler, which I'm building as an FPV plane, and I'd like to be able to take advantage of some of the telemetry. So the first thing I'm going to do is bind this. Uh, it should be a really quick video, and then uh, the next thing I'll do is go over uh, what mods need to happen to be able to see the telemetry data out of this uh, built-in uh, telemetry capability of this D8R. So um, let's start the binding process. should be fairly straightforward. Um, basically, just have your uh, module back in the back. Now, there are two settings uh, that you really need to worry about here with regard to this back pin. Uh, if so pin 1 should always be off and then pin 2 is off um, if you're doing two-way telemetry uh, or, or receiver capable of two-way telemetry this D8R uh, is actually one of them or uh, it is in the on position if you're doing a binding to a receiver that is not telemetry capable, two-way two telemetry capable uh, and the uh, the last four channel that I did, uh, we bound this way. So I'm going to go off on both switches for this because I do want uh, to bind to this uh, two-way telemetry device and take advantage of it. With that said, uh, just like before, I want to hold down uh, the button on the back. Make sure my throttle stick is down. That's always uh, always a good thing to do um, for fail safes. And then power on the transmitter. And as you can see, I'm getting the uh, flashing red light, and I am getting a beeping. I didn't get this before when I bound in uh, the other mode, but in this two-way telemetry mode, you do get a beeping uh, sound during this process. The next thing I want to do is uh, plug in my uh, receiver into bind mode. The way you want to do this is you hold down this fail-safe or bind you know, button uh, at the same time that you provide power to the receiver. The easy way for me to do this is to go ahead and provide power uh, to the ESC because that takes a little bit more dexterity to be able to plug in uh, the battery. So then with this flat on the table I can just hold down the button with a uh, pencil. Let me make sure I know my polarity. And then with the uh, ground up plug that in. Now you can see my red light is flashing here, and that's telling me that uh, I should be good to go. I'm going to go ahead and power everything off again. I'll plug back in the power to the receiver, getting a red uh, flashing light, which tells me that it's not connected, obviously. Uh, but when we turn on the transmitter, I do get a solid light and my ESC arm. So I'm good to go and I have throttle. So that's it. Pretty simple. Uh, some of these uh, seem more complicated than they really are, but it's a really simple binding process. You just got to make sure you do everything in the right order and you have to hold uh, switches on both sides as you power on the device. So you've got to hold this switch when you power on the transmitter. You got to hold this button when you power on the receiver. So that's it. That's how to bind the D8R2 Plus with the FreeSky DJT module within the uh, 9XR. So real quick, let's talk about fail-safes uh, as it pertains to the FreeSky receivers. Uh, this is particularly uh, something that is new to me coming from a Spectrum uh, transmitter and using Spectrum receivers because the failsafe is handled a little bit differently. So I just wanted to cover it really quick to make sure that uh, for those of you that are transitioning from Spectrum to FreeSky, uh, you'll understand uh, the differences. So um, I've just bound this radio to this particular uh, receiver. Uh, same, same thing I just showed you. Uh, I now have it installed in the plane, but I want to show you something. And, and for safety reasons, please, uh, you know, don't... Uh, don't ever do testing and all that stuff with your 
with your uh, propeller on, but I'm doing this for demonstration purposes and I'm in control of my environment. So I just want to make sure that you understand that normally it would not be safe uh, to run your, uh, your motor on the bench with the prop. But about fail safes, let's just say that I'm running the motor, right, and I'm flying away and I lose power to the radio. As you can see, the motor is still running even though the radio is off, so I've lost signal. As a matter of fact, there's nothing I can do to change the motor now. Unless I get the radio turned back on and of course I've got control again. So uh, that really is the default setting for the FreeSky receivers. The fail safe is actually to remain in the position it was last in when it lost signal. So whatever your servos or whatever your motor's at, when you lose your uh, signal, that's where it's going to stay. So the way you set the fail safe is you get the uh, radio in the position that you want uh, everything to be. So your stick positions, in this case I like my throttle down. Uh, the reason uh, my radio is beeping is I have it set every 10 seconds to beep when my flaps are on full deployment. So you'll hear that 10 second beep. Just ignore that for the purposes of this. Uh, but to set the fail safe, I'm just going to hit that fail safe button momentarily uh, with the tip of this pen, and this is why I have this flaps down. Now, did you hear that beep? That beep was actually uh, the fail safe setting. So now, with the fail safe setting, if I uh, have the motor running and I lose signals for some reason, for whatever reason, you can see it's going to go into a failsafe. Now, one thing I had set, and this is just for demonstration purposes, is my flaps were set down so that I could reach the failsafe button to show you. Uh, but that means that my failsafe also includes flaps. Uh, so there are several different ways you can handle this. Um, I know some people that put a little bit of right uh, aileron into the... Uh, uh, into the mix for fail safe so it will start to make a circle. Whatever you want to do, uh, it's your choice. If you want to clear the fail safe, let's say that you uh, you decide you don't want it anymore, all you have to do is rebind the radio to the receiver and it will clear all the fail safes. So that's fail safes, how they work. I just want to make sure I covered that uh, because I know a lot of people like me are transitioning from Spectrum into uh, Free Sky and it is different. So thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.